wow, that is a tongue twister. Maybe it's just a sign that I really like this color because I keep buying it. Let's take a look at this color palette. Hi guys, welcome back to my knitting podcast. My name is Amy. If you're new here, welcome. I upload podcasts every two weeks to share with you guys what I've been working on, specifically knitting projects. 95% of the time it's knitting, maybe even more than that, but every once in a while, some crochet sneaks in there, including in today's episode. So we will get right into it. Today I am wearing my poppy tee. It's one of my more recent finished objects, a nice summery t-shirt. It is a pattern by Petite Knit, and I knit it in Kelborn Wollens Mohawk. Hobby, which is a cotton linen blend in the color electric blue. This is the size small, so on me, when I blocked it, it had about two inches of positive ease. I think because I've worn it a few times, it might have gotten a little bit wider, and it's a little bit bigger than that now, but I've really been enjoying wearing it and excited to wear it on the episode today. If you want to know more about the process of how I made this tea, episodes 13 and 12 are going to have a lot of content on the poppy tea. But let's get into some of my other more recently finished projects and projects I've been working on. So I do have one finished object and that is my muscle burra hat. This is a pattern by Isolde Teague and I don't remember when I started this. It's definitely been a few months. This has kind of been an in the background on the go project for me. The muscle burra hat is a fingering weight or I knit it in fingering weight yarn double lined beanie. I wanted to have a folded brim so you can see that here. The yarn I used is Dirty Water Dye Works fingering in the color sprinkles this is a four ply fingering weight sock yarn so it's a 75 percent superwash merino wool and 25 percent nylon blend get good amount of yardage with that skein i think it was about 464 yards and it created this little beanie so i was really excited to make some progress on this i feel like i had a lot of momentum at the beginning of the project made a lot of progress on it kind of put it away worked on some other stuff and then recently i've been going out a little bit more having we had a few movie outings nick and i so i spent a lot of time knitting this at the movies just last week we saw spider-man across the spider-verse and so that's when i actually finished the knitting of the body of this hat and then when i I came home did the last crown so if you're unfamiliar with the muscle burrow hat surprise it actually looks like this which is pretty wild so this is just a really long tube you do start at one end with a small circumference like ring of stitches and then you do the increases for the crown you knit all stockinette until you're ready to decrease for the crown and then you do decreases kind of similar to a more traditional hat at the other end and so you have this really long tube and yeah you like fold it up or kind of invert it on itself to make a double lined beanie now the inverting on itself is definitely a lot more complex than it seems i feel like i struggle every time i do it um, but i know once i wear it more it'll kind of create like a natural fold line at the middle and should be pretty easy to get back in there but just to give you guys a glimpse of the functionality of this knit hat. It's a great way to use up one skein of yarn. If you have like a special skein or just a skein that you don't know what to do with, you can measure out how to exactly use up one skein, which is what I did here. So to do that, when I knit the first crown, I then put it on my little kitchen scale and measured out how many grams of yarn it took to make that first crown because the first and last crowns are like the pretty much the same size and amount of stitches you know you increase and decrease at the same rate so i measured that i used nine grams of yarn for the crown so i knit the whole body after that until i knew i had just about nine grams left of yarn for the other crown now i knew i wanted to make a scrappy granny square with this leftover yarn as well as not have like exactly nine grams of yarn for the crown so i actually stopped knitting with about 20 grams left because that would give me enough for the crown decreases and a scrappy granny square and so that's what i ended up doing so final measurements on this hat i realized i just undid <laughs> folding it up that took me so long but final measurements between these two crowns ended up being 19 inches before blocking and when i say between the two crowns i'm actually referring to like that very last increase on the first crown up until the very first decrease at the second crown so it's not like tip of the hat to tip of the hat it's like subtracting the crown so I had 19 inches and then I blocked it so I did just a classic wet block soaked it in some 
wool wash and water and then laid it out on my blocking mats and it did grow in length to about 21 inches between the crowns and then that gave me this size beanie let me just fold it up again so you guys can see <laughs> So you saw me holding it up before, but just again, this is how long it is folded up just once. And then I really like the thick brims that are on a lot of beanies these days. So this is what I got in this hat and I'll try it on to show you guys how it looks. And it's exactly what I wanted. You know, I wanted the thick brim and then I also wanted some poof on top. And this is me pulling it over, you know, pretty far over my ears. So in the winter time, like this will definitely get pulled down so I can stay nice and warm, get a little bit of slouch on top. And it's really snug. I made the size adult medium for my 22 inch circumference head. I think the size medium is for 22 inch circumference heads. So fits perfectly. It's got like a good amount of like snugness. Like it's definitely stretching to fit over my head, which is super comfortable. The super wash sock yarn, really comfortable. I haven't worn it obviously it's like warm out so it's not beanie season anymore so I haven't given a fair like test run or test drive of how it wears I know sometimes with knit beanies they can get itchy on my forehead so I can't tell if I'm gonna have that same experience with this beanie but I'll let you guys know come fall when it's time for beanies again just some other specs about this hat I knit it on us3 needles I had originally started with us2 needles and the gauge was too tight so I sized up to us3 needles which is a 3.25 millimeter needle I got seven stitches per inch so I followed the pattern for the seven stitch gauge and yeah so used up pretty much all of the yarn this is about 94 grams total of the four ply sock yarn so very impressed with the pattern i am totally gonna make more of these in the future i really like how simple it was but i feel like the result like the finished result is just really pretty and like stunning i'll just show it up close like the sprinkles color it looks just like sprinkles on ice cream super cute i can totally see myself making this and maybe like some tonal colors i feel like it would be really nice although it, maybe the knitting process would be a little bit more tedious if i'm doing just like a solid color with no variegation because it's just a lot of knitting but this is just a really nice classic staple beanie i can totally see it being a great gift knit can be good for any family member the pattern has sizes for kids through adults so awesome pattern would recommend it I've also been knitting on my Shell Cottage socks. You guys saw these last time. They were, I don't remember what point I showed them to you guys. I think maybe they were like to about here, but I finished off the toe, the same accent color as before. So the Shell Cottage socks are a pattern by Helen Stewart. I have the pattern as part of the Handmade Sock Society pattern bundle, season two, six textured sock patterns that I'm trying to go through all of them. So these are called Shell Cottage socks because the texture kind of looks like shells and I have it on the sock blocker so I think it shows off the texture really well. I'm knitting this on US1 needles that is 2.25 millimeters. I'm using Birch and Lily sock yarn. The main color here is Birch sock in Euphoria which is this beautiful very light purple speckled yarn with all these different speckles of dark purple, green, lighter purple, blue. Just a really stunning speckled yarn and then the accent color is also Birch and Lily Fiber Co sock yarn in the color Serendipity which is a nice tonal purple very well matches the purples in the speckles so I thought it was a really cute pairing I think I shared a lot about this sock pattern last episode so I don't want to repeat myself too much but it's just the standard top-down sock with slip stitch heel flap I have partridge I have partridge slip stitch heel flap. Wow, that is a tongue twister. To be specific, it just makes a nice sort of lattice texture, wedge toe, and Kitchener stitch at the end. Twisted rib cuff, which is a little bit different than normal. I made a shorter cuff than normal. Uh, the pattern calls for about 15 rows of ribbing. I just did 10. I kind of wanted to try the like the thin cuff. I don't know, just, just mixing it up a little bit. And I'll just show the yarn once again. This is a two-ply yarn, so it's a very plump, very round yarn. And this is it in the skein. Really pretty. My favorite colors. You guys know I love purples and blues, so. And, oh, I'm talking about works in progress. And, yeah, this is the progress on the second sock. So we are moving quite along Shell Cottage Socks.
All right, so we're moving right along into whips. I feel like the sock pairs, they're always like a good segue from finished objects into whips because like if I have one sock finish, it's like half of a finished object. But now we're fully into my works in progress. I'm gonna talk about my blanket next. You guys can see it behind me. So let me grab that. I really don't know how it's gonna show in the camera frame, so bear with me. Here it is. <laughs> So I have been working on this Moonstone plaid blanket. It's been a commission for my Nana. So this is a free pattern by Alexi Tavell of Two of Wands, and it is knit in lion brand Hue and Me, which is an 80% acrylic, 20% wool, bulky weight yarn. So yeah, this is just a big plaid blanket. I feel like it's really stunning and you knit the whole blanket first in garter stitch. That's how you get these big stripes. And then you weave yarn into the garter stitch ridges to create the plaid effect. And on camera, it looks gorgeous. It's one of those things where when I'm working on it and I'm like really like up close and looking at it directly, it's hard to see the like finished effect. But then if I'm done working on it, I'll put it down on the couch, walk away from it and take a look and I'm like, wow, it looks really good. Yeah, last time I shared this with you guys, I was all done with the knitting but had not blocked it and had not started the weaving process but now you guys can see I am well into the weaving process so because this is a mostly acrylic yarn I knew steam blocking would fare pretty well on it I've had good experiences with steam blocking acrylic so and I also didn't want to deal with this giant piece of knit fabric like in the tub and then all wet and having to wring out all that water and then have it lay flat somewhere to dry so I actually laid out a bunch of towels on my bed and then steam blocked it there with my handheld steamer and it worked pretty well it definitely expanded the garter stitch which was the whole point so as I was steaming it I really tried to pull the blanket as much as possible to open it up but without pulling it too much where it distorted the stitches in any sort of way you know I really just wanted to open up all those garter ridges so I could have the biggest piece of fabric possible so I did take some measurements before and after blocking this blanket is sort of meant to be more of like a throw it's not like a bed size blanket but it's a really sizable lap blanket or throw for like a couch or a chair so before I blocked it it measured 34 inches by 54 inches and then after steam blocking it measured 37 inches by 63 inches so definitely grew a lot in length and just a little bit in width so in the pattern it is mentioned that the weaving process also widens the fabric and makes it a little bit shorter so once i finish weaving it i'll measure it a third time and then i have all of those measurements listed on my ravelry project page which i know is helpful if you're trying to make the same thing and want to know how big it's going to be the pattern does say that the finished dimensions of the blanket will be 46 by 56 inches which I feel like I'm on the right track knowing that right now I'm a little bit longer than that and a little bit narrower but knowing that the weaving is going to make it wider and shorter I think I'm going to end up with something pretty close to that size for the blanket. Now let's talk about the weaving. This is something I was a little bit nervous about or maybe looking forward to in like an apprehensive way because it's something I've never done before. I don't really weave and I haven't done any sort of similar project to this. And some of the Ravelry project pages, other knitters have shared that they didn't really enjoy the weaving process. So I wanted to go into it with an open mind, but I didn't really know what to expect. So I will say it is a slow process. I have been working on this after work every night for the past two weeks almost, and I'm not done. So. I have done, I would say 75% of the blanket. I actually haven't shown you guys the non-plaid part, but this is what I have left to weave. And you have to weave into every garter stitch. So this is an 80 stitch wide blanket. So I have to weave in 80 strands of yarn that are the entire length of the blanket. So yeah, it's definitely been slow and I wouldn't say I dislike it though. It's one of those things where I don't dislike it. I think it can be very therapeutic. You know, once you get into the rhythm of it, it's kind of nice. But after work, I have a bunch of knitting projects looking at me and I feel like I'm gravitated more towards my actual knitting projects than this woven blanket. So I feel like it takes a lot of energy for me to actually sit down and start working on the weaving, but once I'm into it, I can get into a groove and get a good amount done each night. You do have to cut all of the like long strands of yarn for the weaving. It was suggested in the pattern to do it all at once. So you just have 
all the strands ready to go. I'm kind of doing them in batches just because I didn't really know where to store all of the cut pieces of yarn in a way that they wouldn't get tangled. So I've been doing it in batches. I think it definitely slows down the process because I'll weave in a few strands and then I have to stop, get up, cut more and then weave more. So maybe I should have done them all at once, but at the time I thought it was better for me to space it out. I also, I don't know if this is just a me thing, but I find it really difficult to cut lengths of yarn all at the same length, especially this like very like tightly spun round yarn, you know, it has a lot of like spring to it. And I feel like when I'm like pulling the yarn out of the ball, you know, I'll start with a measuring tape to cut it to the correct length, but then I'll just match it up to the previous piece of yarn that I cut just so I don't have to keep going against the measuring tape each time. But I don't know, all of my yarn strands have ended up at different lengths and at the very beginning I was definitely cutting them too short. So I think I'm gonna have to go back and redo them just cause I want long fringe. I feel like the long fringe in the sample photo of the pattern makes the blanket look really classy. And so I don't want it to be too short and some of my strands are definitely shorter than others. Like these are really long, these are really short. So. I may have to go back and redo some strands. Also, after I'm done doing all of the actual weaving, I definitely know that I'm gonna have to do some like fabric management. Like right now, none of these woven ends are secured. They're just sort of loose. So the fabric has like a lot of play with it, like sliding in and out of the strands. So I'm gonna have to lay it all out on my bed and sort of coerce the fabric in a way that's it's centered on all of the strands and not bunched up in different places. So that's gonna be an additional step. You do a rope twisted fringe at the end, which there is a video tutorial for in the pattern. There is also a video tutorial for the weaving, which is definitely super helpful because I was doing it wrong at first and needed to refer back to the video to fix some of my early mistakes. But gonna have to do the rope twisted fringe and that will help lock all of the woven ends in place so the blanket shouldn't really move around once those are done. So I feel like I'm close to the end of the blanket but not really because there's definitely still a lot more to do. I don't think I'm gonna block it after I'm done weaving. Maybe I'll give it a quick steam but I feel like the weaving takes away the sort of like flexibility and bounciness of the knit fabric like this definitely Obviously it shows characteristics more of like a woven fabric that doesn't have a lot of give, doesn't have a lot of stretch compared to like all of this open garter stitch. Like look at all of that play and stretch and movement. Whereas here on the plaid side, you know, I mean, you have a little bit, but it definitely is more of a woven piece in terms of characteristics than knit once it's finished. So yeah, Moonstone plaid blanket going really well, really enjoying it, a totally different type of project than what I'm used to. I don't think I'm going to rush to do another one after this. This is definitely one of those unique projects that, you know, you can tell by what I'm saying, it's taking up a lot of time and energy. So I don't think it'll be anytime soon that I have the energy to make another one, but I'm really impressed with the result, really impressed with this idea of weaving through garter stitch. A lot of you guys who have commented on my Instagram posts about it have really enjoyed it as well and want to make it too. I will say that Two of Wands also has another pattern that has this woven style. It's called the Waterberry Plaid Blanket Scarf. If you want to try out this weaving technique but don't want to commit to a whole blanket, check out the scarf pattern. I think it may be a more manageable, smaller scale project. All right, my next work in progress is my Cumulus Tea. This is a pattern by Petite Knit. I started this, or I first introduced it in the podcast last episode. I am knitting this with Knitting for Olive Pure Silk, which is the recommended yarn for the pattern in the color, Dar in the color Dusty Artichoke. So it's a really nice pale green, and last episode I complained a lot about the pure silk. This has not been my favorite yarn to work with. It's just a little rough. I feel like my tensioning is not as good, and it's difficult to get good tension. And I really was uncomfortable purling with it for some reason, even though I don't normally have like uncomfortableness with purling. But since then, I have joined in the round, and I've been just knitting straight stockinette for the body. Right now I have my cute little avocado stitch stoppers, which I really love. So cute, um, <laughs> I got distracted by them. But yeah, I will say knitting in the round with the pure silk is a much better experience than purling. So I think because of that, 
the pure silk definitely has some redeeming qualities in my mind obviously the fabric is gorgeous i was able to try this on and i'm really enjoying the fit i really love how shallow the v-neck is like it only comes up to like here which is great i just really don't like deep v-necks i'm very impressed with the style of this t-shirt and really excited to have it in my wardrobe i feel like i don't really want to pick it up and work on it because the silk is not my favorite yarn but i am forcing myself to knit on it because i do really want the finished product i think it's going to be a great addition to my wardrobe just like a classy silky staple tee that i think will dress up a lot of outfits that if i otherwise wore like a plain crew neck t-shirt it would be kind of boring so so i got four balls of the pure silk to make the t-shirt in my size i'm doing the size small and this is the second ball so i'm maybe like a little bit more than halfway done with the second ball once i'm done with the second ball of yarn on the body i'm probably gonna go and do the neckline which is an applied eye cord neckline and then do the sleeves although i'm still a little indecisive on what i'm gonna do with the sleeves in petite knit sample photo her sleeves are pretty long they might be a similar length to this poppy tee sleeve they might even be a little bit longer i'm not sure if i'm gonna want that super long sleeve i think a lot of other people who have knit this have made a shorter sleeve on it so i'm gonna have to dig through some of the ravelry project pages see what other people did see how it looks and what i like and don't like and then decide what to do about the sleeve length but yeah we're moving quite along with this t-shirt honestly it's growing pretty slowly but at the same time i feel like it's not like as i'm knitting it i feel like it takes forever to get through a round but then when i hold it up and see how far i've gotten i'm like oh that's not bad that's a good amount of progress so it's definitely not flying by like this t-shirt was and i don't know why because the needle size is not that different these are knit on three millimeter needles whereas the poppy tee i knit on three and a half millimeter needles so we're only talking about like a half a millimeter difference, but I just feel like this is so much slower and taking so much longer. And with that, I don't know if I have much more to say about this tea, cumulus tea, coming soon. I can't tell when I'm going to be done with it. It's not going to be by next podcast in two weeks, but maybe next next podcast in four weeks I would have it done. We'll see. I have a lot of other things on the needles right now, which overall decreases my rate at which things get done, so up in the air but i am really excited to wear it when it's finished my next whip is one that i kind of resurrected i haven't mentioned it in a few podcasts but i did start the barber shawl by gregoria fibers i've been talking about knitting this like i feel like forever it's been since the winter through the spring now we're in late spring and i don't have a lot of progress on it but this is the barber shawl by gregoria fibers it's a triangle shawl i'm making the size large which is a pretty sizable shawl and it's knit in this sort of accordion just alternating rib it's it's knit in pearls but it creates this nice accordion fabric that kind of folds naturally on itself and it's symmetrical on both sides so it's just gonna grow like this you know grow out like a triangle and then once i get to the midpoint it'll grow back it'll decrease inwards to make that shawl the yarn that I'm using is by Yarn Matter, and this is their Pure Sport in the color Sugar Plum Fairy. It's a 100% non-superwash wool from the Nutcracker collection that she had around Christmas time last winter. So I really love this color. I think this is going to be a really nice piece to have once the fall comes. So I'm working on it now so it can be ready to wear once the cooler weather hits later this year. But yeah, I haven't worked on this in a while because I feel like I haven't memorized the pattern yet. It's a 12 row repeat, which for some reason it's been difficult for me to memorize and so I still have to have the pattern open when I'm working on it so I can't really bring this anywhere and I don't know I feel like sometimes if you need a pattern open to work on something it makes a totally different crafting vibe than if you can just pick something up and work on it without thinking about it like knitting a body in the round stockinette stitch or even if it's a pattern but it's like a short repeat that's like a lot more comforting to work on while watching tv rather than this one where I know I'm gonna have to look at the pattern so that's my biggest reason why I haven't made a lot of progress on this but I feel like I'm close to memorizing the pattern I think I'm almost there I've been like working through it with the pattern open and then I've been working through it with the pattern still open but I'm like I'm like not looking at it 
and then just quickly like checking to make sure with every row I'm not doing something wrong so I'm almost there once I get the pattern memorized I think it'll be pretty easy to work on this I can also tell like just from previewing the pattern I think this increase portion is harder to memorize than the decrease portion so just got to get halfway and then it'll be smooth sailing on this shawl the yarn has been a dream to work with I feel like I've been working with all those summer fibers. I was working on the Whitmore cardigan with some superwash merino wool and to pick up some non-superwash wool, it's been so nice. I've been working on this project with the Knitter's Pride Mindful Needles, which are stainless steel. I would equate them to the Chowku stainless steel needles in terms of like feel and texture. And I feel like the combination of this non-superwash wool with the stainless steel, it's just been like a beautiful, experience it's like one of those things that makes me love knitting it just feels so nice and smooth and plump and just everything good about stitching my next work in progress is also one that i have mentioned before stop talking about it and it's back because i made some progress on it and that is my scrappy granny square blanket so i have all these granny squares stored in this plastic bag but my goal or this project was mostly inspired by Nitty Natty who recently finished a scrappy granny square blanket that she said she's worked on for like several years using up different sock yarns from advent calendars. So I really liked the look of it and I thought it would be fun and a fun way to incorporate crochet because I don't crochet very often, but I do enjoy it in small amounts. So granny squares, I feel like are the perfect little project that satisfy my crochet craving without having me make a commitment to a huge crochet project. So I've been working on these granny squares. You guys might remember them if you've been following me for a while. So since I finished the muscle bro hat and I wanted to make a scrappy granny square out of the remaining yarn from this yarn, I obviously made that granny square. Let me find it. Here it is. Ta-da! So cute. I feel like it's so cute when things are knit in the same yarn, but they're like different. Like they just go so well together. <laughs> so yeah, I knit this granny square right after finishing the muscle burr hat, and then that sort of gave me motivation to work on some more squares. So I actually blocked a bunch of my previously made squares while I was blocking my muscle burr hat, you know, reuse the water, and it made them a really nice crisp square shape. And then I also had to redo a few squares that I had originally started crocheting with a Susan Bates metal crochet hook, which I discovered I didn't love, and I started using the Clover Amore crochet hooks, which I really enjoy, but that really changed my crochet tension, so I had a lot of squares that were originally made with the Susan Bates hooks that were a way different size than my newer squares with the Clover hooks. So I needed to undo those squares that were older and re-crochet them just so everything is a consistent size. So I had the motivation to do that. So I re-knit, re-knit. I re-crocheted a few squares with the Clover hook and then made a couple new ones as well with some other leftover sock yarns in my stash. So granny squares are coming along. I was trying to map out how many squares I might need to make a sizable blanket and I was trying to figure out if I would be able to do that solely with scrap yarn or if I would have to purchase some extra yarn to make the squares because although I don't really have a end date for this project like I don't need it by next year but I don't really want this project to be like five, ten years down the line and still not done. So these squares are about four by four inches. So thinking about that, calculating how many squares I would want to make a blanket. Basically, I would need like 90 to 100 squares to make a pretty big blanket, which is what I want. And I don't think I'm gonna be able to make 90 squares from just leftover sock yarns. So I was also thinking because it's the season of ordering advent calendars, yarn advent calendars that would come in the December time frame. So I've always been interested and intrigued by advent calendars. I think they're really fun. I love the surprise element of them, but with yarn, you know, I'd like to be very specific when I get yarn for my projects and garments, but so that always like strayed me away from advent calendars because it is a really big investment and you don't know what yarn you're getting and I don't know if I really like that and I don't want to be stuck with yarn that I wouldn't know how to use but 
I don't really have a color scheme for this blanket. I really like the randomness of the granny squares and I really like these fun variegated colors that I would not use in garments for me personally, but they're so pretty and they're so fun to crochet with. These are all two ply sock yarn, so they're really plump and round and I just really love the idea of getting more like fun variegated sock yarns to make these squares with. So I was like, well, that sounds like the perfect opportunity to use an advent calendar for. So I might purchase an advent calendar. I have my eye on a few, haven't placed an order yet. Definitely need to like save up some money for that. So there might be some significant progress on the blanket come December. You know, maybe I'll make a granny square every day with the new yarn minis that I open up. So Lots of potential with this. I'm excited for it. Should be really fun. My next work in progress is not in the room with us right now. It's on timeout because I'm upset with it. <laughs> no, it's my Whitmore cardigan, which if you watched last episode, I talked about how I didn't really like how it was fitting. I'm pretty sure it's too big. I feel like it's a little big. And I know I have to block it and do some measurements and some calculations to figure out where my gauge went wrong how big it actually is and compare it to what I want it to be. So because of that, it is sitting at the bottom of my big project bag. Whenever I get the energy to block it and do all those things, I will do it. But for now, I think it's been nice to have it in a timeout. You know, I just haven't wanted to work on it, which is fine. It gives me more time to work on my other projects. So not sure when you guys will see that again, but just wanted to give you guys an update on that. Thanks for all your comments last episode. A lot of you guys recommended frogging it and I'm 99% sure that's what I'm gonna end up doing. And I know I'll be really happy with that decision in the end, even though it's painful now. All right, my last work in progress is a new one. So let me pull it out. So I have started camisole number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. This has been on my to knit list for a while now, like definitely since last summer. And I'm super excited to finally be getting to it. I am knitting it and knitting for olive cotton merino in the color Dusty Blue Whale. Cotton merino is a light fingering weight, 70% cotton, 30% merino yarn. And I haven't used it before. I've heard very good things about it. People really like it for summer knits because you get that breathability and coolness of cotton, but you also have like the memory and the springiness of the merino wool all in one yarn. I've been enjoying knitting with it so far. This tank top is knit on three millimeter needles. That's the suggested size and I got gauge with it so I'm just going ahead with that needle size. I actually had to buy a new pair of three millimeter needles because you might recall that my cumulus tee is also on three millimeter needles. I only had one set and I really wanted to start this because you know the pure silk I can only handle in small amounts. So was able to start this. It definitely looks, you know, not like much now. It looks really tiny, but this is just the front neck part and like the top of the shoulders. So it's all in two by two rib. It's definitely gonna stretch with wear and with blocking. Definitely like a finicky start. You have to do both the straps separately and then connect them. And now I'm on the increases. So it's moving along slowly. I think I'll definitely get into a better groove with it. Once I get past, you know, the sort of neck area, but yeah, I've been enjoying it so far. I feel like the only maybe negative comment or worry I have about it is it being see-through. This is a light fingering weight yarn and I did get gauge on three millimeter needles. So I didn't want to size down because then my gauge would be a little off, but I feel like there's a lot of space between all the stitches, especially when it's stretched out as you can see here. So. I'm not sure if that'll be a problem when I wear this tank top or not. Cross that bridge when we get there. The stitches might plump up a little bit when I block it, but I did block my gauge swatch and it kind of still had the same effect. So we'll see how this wears. I feel like I can't make a full review of the yarn yet just because I really haven't used it a lot, but it's been nice. You know, it definitely feels like cotton, but it definitely feels better than the silk. Like I'm enjoying knitting with this more than the pure silk on the cumulus tee, but definitely still prefer wool, like 100% wool to either of these summer fibers. 
All right, now we'll get into some future plans and some new yarn that I got. Really excited to share these with you guys. You guys know I love Sorella yarn and their spring season just recently came to an end. And I've been eyeing their spring tonals all season. I think out of all of the four seasons that they have their tonal palettes out for, their spring one is my favorite. I just love all of those pinks and purples and blues. So I was really eyeing it and I placed an order on like the last available day that they were out because I really wanted to get some before they weren't available anymore. One of the first things that I've always had an eye on is their spring base which was only available with the spring tonals and that is bamboo sock. So I got some bamboo sock in the color Pinot Noir. This is an 80% superwash merino wool but 20% bamboo and it's a fingering weight yarn. You get 436 yards for 100 grams. And you guys know this whole spring and summer, I've been wanting to try more summer fiber blends, see what I like, see what I don't like. Been super intrigued by this bamboo blend. You know, it's only 20% bamboo, but I feel like you can really tell how much effect the bamboo has, at least on the visual appeal of this skein of yarn. You can see how shiny it is, and it's definitely drapier than like your regular wool. It's hard to tell because I didn't get like the same exact color in a regular wool from Sorella. I really wanted to make a t-shirt with this. I got two skeins, which should be enough to make a tee. I've been eyeing this pattern called the Lanakai Summer Tee, which is a pattern by Sally Yi. I really like it. It's kind of giving ranunculus vibes, and I know everyone's knitting the ranunculus right now, so maybe that kind of subconsciously inspired me to be attracted to this design. I really like the oversized circular yoke fit. I like those like three lace or eyelet lines that go across the yoke and I think that it would really benefit from a yarn like bamboo sock. You know with the really oversized fit I think the drape in this fingering weight yarn would look really nice for a summer t-shirt. So that's my plan with this. Like I said before this is the Pinot Noir color which is this like reddish purple. Okay but not gonna lie I thought it was gonna be more red. I'll put up the picture from the website of what I was expecting and I think you guys might agree that this does not really match that color from the website super well so I didn't think it was gonna be this purple leaning it's honestly like the same exact color as the barber shawl that I'm knitting so you guys can see here they look pretty similar and I was not intending to buy the same yarn color twice but maybe it's just a sign that I really like this color because I keep buying it but I think it's going to look really nice on me. I am very curious to see not only how the bamboo sock knits, but also how it wears. Again, 80% wool, so is it still going to be too hot in the summer? Unsure. So I'll keep you guys posted when I start this project and let you know what I think. I also picked up two skeins of sock yarn from Sorella from their spring tonals. So this is the color Boulangerie, which is a beautiful just sort of just pale pink. And I also got the color Toile, which you might say is familiar, and it is. So this is the same color that I knit my Provence sweater in, which was yarn also from Sorella. That was in the Surrey lace, but this is the sock base. So these are both, they're just their classic nylon sock, which is 80-20 superwash wool and nylon. It's a plump two-ply, so you get 400 yards per 100 gram skein. So I'm really excited to use these tonals. I have them in mind for more of the Helen Stewart textured sock patterns. I think the tonal yarns are gonna show off some of the patterns really well. Excited to knit them up. And I have two more skeins to show you guys. So a while ago, I won an Instagram giveaway. This is the only giveaway that I've won so far. Um, Emma from Midsummer Knits did a giveaway a little while back and the prize was a gift card to Eat Sleep Knit which is a yarn store in Georgia. So thank you Emma for the gift card. I'm really excited that I finally got to use it. I've been sitting on it for a while because I wasn't really sure what to get with it and I actually used most of the gift card to stock up on some new Chowgu red lace needles in some smaller sizes like three millimeter, two and a half millimeter, and two millimeter just because those didn't come in my interchangeable needle set that I own and most of my projects right now are using those smaller needle sizes so I just needed some new needles but I was able to squeeze in a few skeins of yarn into the order as well with the gift card so we'll start with the exciting one. This is Sweet Georgia Yarns Hand-Dyed Tough Love Sock. 
This is an 80% superwash merino wool, 20% nylon. It's a three ply, which is new to me. You get 425 yards per 115 gram skein. And this is the color Magician, which these are just all of my favorite colors in one skein. This is just absolutely stunning. Kind of has that like oil slick vibe. I really like it. My plan with this right now, plans could change, but I would love to make a muscle burra hat with this. I think it would look really nice in the winter. You know, it definitely contrasts with the white hat that I just made, this like colorful blue. It's kind of the variegated where I don't think this is gonna make stripes at all or pool. I think it's just gonna look very like variegated all around. So I'm excited to knit with this and feel how the three ply sock yarn knits up. I could be tempted to knit socks with this as well. So I don't think I'm gonna cast it on anytime soon. It's gonna sit in my yarn stash for a while and we'll see what pattern speaks to me in the future. And then the other skein of sock yarn that I got is Cascade Yarn Heritage. I haven't used this sock yarn before, but it is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon yarn. It's a four ply, so it looks like you get 437 yards with this 100 gram skein. This is just the color white, nothing too special. I got this because I wanted to have a white available to me if I ever want to do some sort of accents in my socks. I do have Summerly Knits Cider House sock pattern in my library. I haven't knit them yet, but I really like how it looks with that sort of white band at the top of the leg. So that was why I bought this specifically, but of course I can use this as any other sort of accent in a sock project. So yeah, these are all my new yarns from the past two weeks. I'm not buying any more yarn for a while. I feel like I've recently been getting a lot of yarn because I have not had a lot of summer yarns in my stash and I really wanted to try a bunch of summer yarns. So this is probably the last of the yarn that I'll be buying for the last of spring and into summer. And I'm doing pretty well with wools and stuff for the fall. So. Yeah, lots of yarn here, but I don't think they'll, there will be a lot of yarn in the future from me, but just take a look at this color palette. It's absolutely gorgeous. I feel like if I were to make my favorite colors into a palette, it would be this handful right here. These are like all my favorite blues and purples and pinks. So yeah, really pretty, really excited to work with all these. I've definitely been enjoying like immersing myself more in colors that I love. I don't know why, but it was just really hard for me in previous years to get colors that I love because I feel like the colors that I love are not, they were not like promoted as much. I feel like in the past few years, maybe more last year and not now, but I feel like last year it was all about the beige and the creams and like very neutrals and I, was really drawn to just like copying other people instead of doing what I wanted to do with colors. So I'm excited that I've moved on from that and I'm now embracing colors that I really love and I think that look good on me. So I encourage you guys to do the same if you find yourself just buying colors because everyone else is using them. Just yeah, remember that it's okay to knit with your favorite color even though it could be bright or off trend or something, it doesn't matter. And that's about all the updates that I have for you guys. I did want to share that I feel like I'm sensing that I might be casting on something wooly soon. Like all of my projects right now are fingering weight and they're either socks or summer patterns and I've been craving like a nice wool piece, something bigger, maybe DK weight, even worsted. And I do have some stuff in my queue that is more for the fall and the winter, but I might cast it on soon. So keep an eye out for that. We'll see when that urge takes over and I actually start a new project, but I have a feeling that something wooly and oversized and sweatery is in my future. But other than that, thank you guys so much for joining me today. If you wanna follow me on Instagram, my account is the same name over there, Any Knits. I post pretty frequently so you guys can get more up-to-date progress on my projects. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.